Okay, we're going to be attaching a regulator to an H size oxygen tank. There are a few pieces of equipment that you'll need. You will need a wrench. This one is specifically sized for the oxygen regulator. Many hospitals no longer carry these. They've lost them. They've been lost throughout the years, whatnot. So they'll have the standard adjustable wrench, commonly called as a crescent wrench or adjustable wrench. You adjust it by just rolling. How do I get it to the right size? You take your regulator and then we'll just screw it accordingly and make it a little snug and it's good to go. You'll also need a regulator. Depending on what you're doing with the oxygen tank, you'll either need a pressure regulator or one with a Thorpe tube. The pressure regulator has two gauges on it. These are called Bordon gauges. The first gauge here, since it's closest to the tank, tells you the pressure inside the tank. The one here tells you the pressure outside of the tank. So it's your delivering pressure. This adjusts the pressure here, the output pressure. So before you put it on, you want to make sure it's all the way off. If you read it, it says increase and decrease. You want to make it sure it's all the way decreased. Okay, this one would be utilized if you're delivering oxygen to a patient. This gauge, Bordon gauge, will tell you about the pressure inside the tank. This is called a Thorpe tube. The Thorpe tube will actually tell you what flow is coming out of the tank. You adjust the flow here, and you see this is no adjustment. You cannot adjust that. So the only thing is you put this on, Make sure this is turned completely off, and when you put it on, then you adjust the flow accordingly. Again, oxygen nuts are all the same size. Both of these utilize a safety mechanism. Right here, these are a certain size. That is the American Safety Standard System, ASSS. The American Safety Standard System is utilized on pressures greater than 200 PSI. The tank has a PSI of anywhere from 2,000 to 2,200, 2,200 when it's brand new, so therefore it has to use the American Safety Standard System. Okay, now I take one of my gauges, I'm just going to use my oxygen gauge, and this is the cap. This is a safety cap to prevent to protect the valve that's in here. Let's say you go to take it off and it's all rusted and you can't get it off. <clears throat> what do you do? Light taps. All you're trying to do is break that rust loose. If you still can't get it, what you can do is if you see this end, it is designed perfectly. You go in and you pop it and you break it loose. See? Don't stick it all the way in because there is a valve in there, but just in a little bit and give it a quick pop. It should break it loose. Then you take your cap off. There, there's my stem. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure there's no debris in here. This stuff, these tanks may have been sitting on the back dock. They've been sitting in storage. Who knows how long? Also, Jumping back real quick, you see the tag here, empty and use full. When you open a tank and start to use it, you need to rip off the full, and then it's in use. When it's empty, you rip off the in use, and it stands empty. This is how you know what level your tank is. But anyway, this has been sitting on the dock. There could be dust, there could be spiders, there could be rust in there. And anything that is in there, once you put this regulator on and it drives it in there, one, it can damage your regulator. Secondly, it is a fire hazard. Any dust and debris in there can create heat, you're in a high oxygen environment, and it can actually create fire issues, and we don't want that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to clean that debris out. And what you do is you, what is commonly called, crack the tank. And, but you want to announce, let everybody know, because this is very loud. What you want to do is say, I'm cracking my tank, and a quick twist on and off to blast it out. Ready? A little bit louder. So you turn it on off. It lets the pressure out. So then you take 
your regulator, so I've blown out all the dust and debris. Put this on and you just screw it on. You have to, if you're not mechanically inclined, if you have never worked on cars, nuts and bolts, put things together, you may have a little difficulty. You want to get this straight and you just screw it all the way down. Okay, it's all the way down. I want to make sure that this is all the way decreased. It is. Then I take my wrench, put it on here. You want to hold your regulator up straight. There you go. And you tighten that on. And then you open it. Boom. It's hard to see on the video, but as you see in class, the green all the way up here is full. Red is your buffer zone. It starts at about 500 PSI. That means you need to get a new tank. But the green is full. This one is reading, yep, right about 2,200 pounds. And you listen. Ah, I've got a hiss. That means I have a leak. What do I do with that? I need to put this on tighter. No hiss. Now, once you're done, you want to turn the tank off, decompress the regulator. My needle went down to zero. Turn this back off, and now I need to get this thing off. How do I do that? Well, you just cranked it on there pretty tight. It may be hard. Little taps. That is it. This is, as I said, the board on gauges. Thorpe tube. We'll have another video over the actual flow meters.